Pretty Gang, it is Jim, your exclusive startup business coach. This video in particular is brought to you by my Braid Hair for Cash course. Make sure you're going out in the description, you're checking out that course, okay? So the first thing I want to come in and talk to you guys about, not the first thing, but it's going to be three, but I want to tell you guys about mistakes that I made as a braider that I don't want you to make, especially if you're a brand new braider. And even if you're a seasoned braider, I think one of these things you might agree with me not to do, okay? So the first thing I want you not to do that I did, okay, the mistake I made was I was charging very cheap prices. Now, I know that when you're a brand new braider, it's kind of a little nerve wracking to charge a lot of money for what you know how to do, but you want to be realistic, but you want to have that fine line, right? If you know it's a style that you know how to do, but you're brand new, still charge what the industry is saying you can charge. Make sure you're checking out my video where I tell you, or I suggest to you, um, some prices that you can have for your braiding business, okay? But I want you to charge what you're worth. However, be realistic about your level of expertise and how long it's going to take you to do it and if it's going to come out like the client would like it to be. So my number one mistake was charging cheap prices. Don't do that. Okay. The second thing that I did that was a mistake is I used to overbook myself. Now, for many of us, overbooking is a good thing. Being booked and braided is a lovely thing, honey, because that means you're about to get this money. You're about to get these coins. However, what also you have to take into consideration is if you're booking so close together and you're overbooked, sometimes your times may overlap. There's travel time in between getting from one client to the next. Not to mention the most main thing is you want to be what me and my coworker like to joke and call a fresh leg. When you go and do somebody's hair and you, um, you know, just came from your house, you know, you took your shower, you had your breakfast, had you something, you know, some juice or some water or something like that. When you get to that person's house, you can, you're, you have energy to do the hairstyle. But if you are three clients in, right, sometimes you might sacrifice your technique for the quantity of clients. Meaning, you done had all these clients all day, now your hairstyle starting to look raggedy. Let's just keep it real. Okay, you done had all these clients all day. It's it's nice you book three people, but now by the time you get to the third person, your product might not be as good as you might want it to be because you have overbooked yourself. Okay, so I don't suggest you book back to back. For those of you guys who have not watched my other video where I tell you guys my unpopular opinion about braiding is one of my unpopular opinions is. I don't like same day clients, but that's a whole nother story. Go check that video out. Okay. The last but not least, okay, is fraternizing with clients. Okay. Let's just more so do not become friends with your clients. Don't become booed up with your clients. Don't be all in love with your clients. Because the truth of the matter is, honey, baby, honey, baby. It, it, it muddies the waters for you, okay? If you start dating a client or you start to become friends with clients, people might want discounts. People may not want to pay you what you're worth anymore. Or people might start to um, use you because they know that you guys are cool, right? We cool. So people are going to start to move and take you out of the unprofessional box. And they start to put you in the not unprofessional, sorry. They move you out of the professional box and move you into a friendship box. And you and I both know... When you're dealing with a customer or a client, it's very different than when you're dealing with your friends, right? You might be a little lean on your friends. Say if you do a client here and they're your friend. Oh, girl, I don't, you know, I know my box raises is 100, girl, but all I got is 75. It's your friends, so you're going to take it. But if you cannot fraternize with the people, don't be besties with the people here you're about to start doing, right? Your clients. It, don't get me wrong, you need to build a good rapport with your clients, but there's that thin line between being professional and crossing over to being a friend. Because if you're going to be a friend, people might not want to honestly pay you what you're worth anymore because you guys are cool now. Not to mention, when you start fraternizing with people, you start doing things that you wouldn't usually do with clients. Such as dating them, smoking with them, drinking, you know, drinking with them. Um accepting you know partial payments or sometimes no payments because you start messing around with folks they don't think oh you're supposed to do that for me because you know so i suggest don't get yourself involved in none of that and keep it strictly business and strictly professional so you guys i hope that this was helpful and i'll be talking to you guys later bye y'all